Hello everyone and welcome to Frontier Pilot Simulator in which you're a small time trader trying to make your way on a newly colonized planet. This game had been on my wishlist since it popped up as an upcoming early access title on Steam because I generally play as a trader or a passenger transport in games like EVE Online, Elite Dangerous, and the X series, and the idea of trading in a more planet-side sci-fi environment was appealing, like Euro Truck Sim or American Truck Sim but in three dimensions. It is still in early access, so it was just hanging out on my wish list when the game dev contacted me and asked me to review it, so this is a developer provided key I'm playing with in full disclosure. So here we have the control setup, and I thought I would show you this because with early access games you don't really know whether you're going to get a full variety of options sometimes. And it did have joystick support, which I was very happy with. Uh, it's really annoying sometimes playing uh, simulators without joystick support, and this did. And actually a lot of options to configure the joystick. Also, the graphic options, as you can see, uh, were, were thorough, and I turned off motion blur, but everything else was uh, tip-top, so this is about as good as it's got. It does have tips right at the beginning, it asks you to press F1, and it's got a few screens on how to fly, how to trade. And actually, one thing I would like is another screen on just describing the UI. Uh, initially, you don't exactly know what, what all the stuff is on the, on the display. And it, after a little while, you figure out what is what. But initially, uh, it's a little bit confusing because there's a lot of stuff there. How to pick up cargo and passengers. So they give you a little bit of a quick tutorial so that uh, you're not completely lost. Though, uh, it did specify the keys on the keyboard and not really the keys that I had assigned on the joystick. So I still had to get used to that. Also, there was a question of whether I had to invert certain axes on the joystick and that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. And it turns out, yes, uh, it, it wasn't entirely intuitive. The way this flies is like a helicopter. And so, normally with a helicopter, you push forward in order to go forward because uh, it pushes the helicopter's nose down and then the rotor is uh, moved forward so that you move forward and then of course you pull on the stick to uh, move back and so I had to readjust that. Also the throttle was a little bit awkward at this point. Actually I think I needed to invert the throttle itself. I do have a throttle axis so needed to work on that. So you can see I'm very awkwardly trying to maneuver this and also I went way too high initially. Uh, I was very high. I didn't really know how high the train was and so I'm getting a feel for that and it turned out that uh, you saw my radar went off that was indicative of going too high from the train. So here I'm losing charge up in the left corner you can see the charge going down but I was actually distracted by the icon in the bottom right which says a low charge down there which is in red and at 97%. I was confused by 97%. How can 97% be low charge? Well, those icons down at the bottom of the screen are actually the damage to the modules, it seems. So uh, I was sort of distracted by that 97% and didn't really pay attention to the charge dropping there. And also there's a charge bar, I think, that drained. Um, yeah, there's a lot of information that this gives you, but it's just important to sort out which is which. So what happens when we die? Well, our little escape pod releases. Whether you eject it or not ahead of time, there is an eject button, delete. and uh, But you don't really have to press that. You, uh, I don't know if there's any net benefit to pressing that. I usually, I have not done so, to be honest. I've died many times, but I, uh, I never press delete to eject. I just let this pod do its thing, bring me back to the spaceport here, and uh, you get a new ship. So here you'll notice I'm starting out with a certain amount of credits, 2,500, and it very carefully brings my pod back to that thing, and it does seem to charge me. I end up with uh, 2,155 after getting a new ship with the basic configuration, basic wings, standard wings. I think that should be standard engines, right? That's the engine. And then the basic hull. So there is an upgrade available. There are more upgrades available over time. So even though it only shows this uh, mule chassis upgrade, we eventually get uh, engine upgrade available. So here I go in my second ship and I decided to fix the settings. And that included inverting the forward and back because actually what I was doing was pushing forward on the joystick was actually moving me back and pulling on the joystick was actually moving me forward, so that was wrong. And again, your throttle is used to manage whether you're going up or down, 
just like in a helicopter. So you, uh, you have to get used to helicopter controls. And there's one more thing, <laughs> as you saw with me smashing into the train there. The one more thing is that because uh, there's gravity, when you set your throttle to midway, which is zero, and that you can set, have the engines flip around and basically push you towards the ground. That means that half of the throttle is devoted to pushing you towards the ground, but you don't really have to do that much because you've got gravity already trying to pull on you. So what I needed to do was to make sure to set the throttle at, uh, at a lower point for zero because too much of my throttle was being devoted to uh, going down and not enough was devoted to fine-tuning how it was going up. And I'll show you how to do that, do that in a little bit. Right now, all we're really supposed to have been doing is getting just a few feet along. I could have probably taxied to this, and you can taxi in this game. You can just roll around on the ground with your wheels to get from one place to another at a particular base. All I was supposed to do was really taxi to this other location here uh, to pick up that container. And now in order to do this, you have to turn around and match the diagram on the ground that shows the proper orientation. And again, here I am just taxiing. It's sort of like truck sim. Uh, if you've ever played one of the truck sim games and backing up though not with the little tight spaces that you usually have to park in and drop your container off of it's a lot easier so here we are backing up <laughs> actually what was confusing me here was the little icon is a little bit further ahead and I was trying to get to zero meters uh, with the icon instead of just matching the diagram at the bottom there so here we are recharging. You press R to recharge at one of these trading posts. This is the only type of location that you get to recharge at. You get to do repairs in the hangar where you pick up your new vessel, the same place. And so I'm picking up uh, these advanced colonial B2 rations and off we go for our first trade run. Now of course picking up rations is a little bit of risk. You have to make sure that you, you're not going to get compensated uh, if you lose the cargo. You get a new ship uh, with a small expense, but if you lose your cargo, you don't get anything back, I don't think. So here I am. Uh, the HUD is very helpful in pointing you in the right direction for various things. And there's also an extremely helpful map that you'll see later. The terrain, however, is uh, fairly uniform right now. And the bases... Well, I mean, it certainly makes sense that uh, we need a craft like this to get around because it's really hard to build roads on terrain like this. And there's sort of an island here. Once we uh, bring up the map, I'll show you what the basic layout is. But here I am trying to land safely, and I'm not quite doing a great job of it. Actually, what confused me here was uh, I was trying to figure out if there was a button to shut off the engines manually, uh, to just say engine off kind of thing. And there isn't. You just have to throttle to zero. And so I wasn't perfectly aware of that. Uh, so I'm doing really bad things here and damaging my vehicle tremendously. And actually, it's sort of instructive in this case because I have a severely damaged vehicle right now. And it's definitely acting like a damaged vehicle. So we do have damage modeling, which is nice. And. And despite the severe damage I have done here, and you can see with the icons at the bottom there to what extent I have damaged this, I managed to still uh, maneuver it so that I can pick up a container or a drop off. I, I don't think I'm... Ca uh, yeah, I've got a cargo there. Uh, there is a little bit of clipping, um, but thank goodness because otherwise probably uh, even more would have been wrecked if not for the clipping. Anyway, I, I've shut off and now I can drop off my advanced colonial B2 rations and pick up some new cargo and recharge. And it's important not to forget to recharge because actually this beginner vessel doesn't carry much charge with it. It, uh, yeah, it doesn't have much range actually, I think. Uh, with my imperfect flying, uh, I, I could probably get it uh, 5 kilometers, but the starting island we're at is only about 5 kilometers. Uh, a distance in any direction so that's not a problem okay so we've picked up empty batteries that we will now transport hopefully to the spaceport in order to get them refilled and in sort of an excess of ambition here I decided to pick up a passenger uh, though I knocked him with my tail right there 
Thank goodness he didn't get irritated by that, and doesn't seem phased at all by the state of my vessel. Uh, which is good, because uh, I don't even know if this thing is airworthy. By the way, on the opening screen, we do get some background as to what time frame we are and the state of this planet. Basically, this has Earth-like gravity. Its atmosphere is a little bit dodgy. Uh, it's got nitrogen and oxygen, but it's got a lot of spores and stuff. And so the local life forms are uh, putting things into the air that's not safe for us. So it's sort of toxic like that. Anyway, we've picked up our passenger who wants to go to the spaceport, uh, which is uh, also where we want to recharge the batteries. But, wow, am I not in the best shape here. Also, you'll note the arrows. Um, I think that's a display I could have turned off. I think what happened was... I was uh, pressing V to try and change views in the hope that that's one irritating thing. Uh, you can't really move the camera around, and I, uh, you know I was trying to use my mouse to maybe move the camera, but that wasn't working. So the camera it does what it does. Yo, oh, wow. I still haven't fine-tuned the throttle yet, but I think that was just negligence on my part. So we kill our first passenger, and I have to pick up a new vessel and. Uh, Ow, ow, and I'm still having throttle issues. Uh, so I was pressing V and I think that displayed all those arrows for the wind and everything. Which which is interesting too, and it'll remain on for the remainder because I didn't realize which key I pressed in order to bring that up. I think it's V, but I'm still not entirely sure. Uh, but, I'm, but I think at the beginning we didn't really see those arrows, and we could probably toggle those. Anyway, here I am. Uh, trying to calibrate the throttle axis and so this is what you do it gives you a lot of options the dead zone the zero point and the sensitivity and so you can basically tune it exactly how you want and of course invert it and so here is what I ultimately decided on a dead zone there and I moved the zero point so that more of the throttle was devoted to the positive thrust, not forward because the engines, these ducted fans, are, you know, vertically oriented. So you can think of it as upward thrust, and I don't really need that much of my throttle devoted to the downward thrust, but the dead zone is important because that's where uh, you basically shut them down in order to make sure you're landed so you can start taxiing, right? So the dead, you have to keep a certain amount of dead zone to make sure that you can actually hit zero on the thrust. So yeah, here we are proceeding with the new configuration. And overall, after I did that, it was much easier to fly. But then again, your own configuration might be different. You might be using keyboard to control it or a different joystick. So, and some joysticks don't have throttles. Here you see me trying to pick up a container that's sort of off to the side. And there are sort of containers lying around in various places that you can pick up. It's not just the ones that you purchase. These are, guys, I guess, the loot that you can pick up and sell. So if you're in a pinch, uh, that's an option. If for some reason you uh, lost credits and you, you know, can't purchase goods, which is unlikely since the uh, empty batteries are only 200. And you can see I've got 3,500 here really need to look to upgrading but here we've got a bit of a problem you can see the stiff wind and I'm pretty heavy at 6600 uh, the mass of the cargo does affect your flight characteristics so that's important to note and here yeah I ran out of battery I, I didn't recharge because I picked up that container off to the side I didn't visit the the trading post where you can recharge I decided though at this point to uh, get the chassis upgrade. Lord knows I do enough damage to my chassis to warrant an upgrade. You'll note that the little robot arms go about their business doing the upgrade and I imagine that on the hundredth time that you do this, this will probably be annoying but uh, it, it is a wonderful attention to detail and I was charmed by it on this occasion. And you know, if you're getting your first upgrade you really do want to see all that. And I decided to try and pick up a package of water here, 50 liter water bottles. And that's pretty heavy, 3,400, I assume, kilograms. And my total mass was 8,278. It prompted me to buy an engine, and you can see a little marker there. So I went back into the upgrade hangar. 
and that's how it picks you up, which is a little bit rough, I thought, but it decided to just smack into me. Uh, but anyway, I found out that the new engines were too expensive, so I could not purchase those. Trying to take off, though, it was abundantly clear why it asked me to get new engines. I couldn't bring this uh, crate of water off the ground. I don't think it's just because of the obviously stiff winds, and it's just a matter of the vertical takeoff ability of this is not good enough. And so when I let go of the crate, I was able to take off. I think uh, to the uh, on the right bar there, the one that's orange right now, that's the one that indicates what your vertical acceleration is. And there's a little line there that shows zero acceleration. And so that's important to notice. See right there, that's zero acceleration and past that you got positive acceleration. So anyway, I've got Dr. Alan Anderson as a passenger. And we're facing some headwind here, trying to land at another location. Now since I'm cutting out most of the flight time, I should note that in general the actual deliveries take about 2-3 minutes. So if you're picking up a passenger or picking up some cargo that to cross this particular initial island, it takes about 2-3 minutes. And even with my awkward flying and gingerly trying to sit down on the ground, uh, it does not take very long to do any one of these missions. Um, it actually takes a little bit longer just to do the ground handling if you're not oriented quite right. Also, dropping off passengers, it's worth noting that uh, as long as you're basically on the base grounds, they're alright with it. If you open the hatch, which the key will vary depending on what you've got, um, they'll just get out and they'll be satisfied. I don't know if they change how much money they give you based on how close to that green marker you get. I didn't really test that. So here we go, letting one passenger off and actually picking another one up. They automatically get on. You don't have to tell them, hey, it's okay or anything. So we, we pick up another passenger. What I didn't do was pick up any more charge, but it so happened that it was enough charge to get me to where this passenger wanted to go. And so once I set down and shut down and open the hatch, we expect the passenger to leave. Yes? Yes! Alright, and we get paid. So, passenger delivery, pretty straightforward. Now this is the extremely helpful map, and you can see it shows you the prices, and uh, we'll see the map again in a sec. It also lets you set multiple waypoints, so and remove those waypoints with uh, right click. So you can set a whole chain of waypoints with left click, and then right click them to remove them, and so forth. So. Yeah, I found the map very useful, and you could see that the island was fairly small, and again, we could cross it in 2-3 minutes, probably faster if I was a better flyer. And so we make a delivery of uh, cells, and I decided to upgrade my engine finally, you know, that engine upgrade that they advertised. So hopefully now we can uh, fly water crates, those heavy things. And so there's a cross-island trip. And I'm going to be carrying advanced colonial B2 rations. So in general, the game, I didn't really get that far as you can see. I played for two hours and I still haven't bought the next ship, uh, which cost 10,000 of these credits. So still saving up for the next ship, which I would guess would have more charge and more range would probably be the most important thing. And on the map, if you look at the bottom, there are little icons with arrows indicating that maybe this island isn't the only place to be. But with this current craft, I can't get that far, so uh, if we're going to venture out, we'll need an upgrade to the ship. A lot has already been sorted out with this game, the flight dynamics and all that. Uh, the physics might not be uh, to everybody's taste, but I found it fine. And challenging, as we can see, damage mechanics we've got. Uh, yeah, the, even after a little bit of playing, I, I still bonked around. So. Yeah, there's a lot to the game, and there are a few things. Of course, I, I really want to see some of the new land masses and make sure that this island isn't all there is. That's going to be something I'm looking for. Uh, the new ships, uh, more ships, and what we're really leading to. 
I, I want to eventually get to. So there's a lot to explore here and a lot of content that probably isn't too hard to add to the game. And uh, maybe more, more economic mechanics like variable prices to the goods and more goods to trade. I didn't see too many trade options as far as different goods on this island. Trading was relatively easy. Uh, it's very forgiving right now, especially since they give you a new vessel immediately. So for a beginner, it was uh, it was nice, of course. But eventually, I want to see where the challenge is, uh, because you know I didn't go bankrupt here, and with all the mistakes I made, I sort of expected to. So we'll see. Anyway, so this is my first impression of this game, Frontier Pilot Simulator, and you can see for yourself what it looks like and whether it interests you. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.